Hello everyone. In the previous videos, we have discussed the least squares estimator in many different variants. However, we have just applied it to the simple case of a static system where we did not really consider any temporal considerations. However, as we are going to focus dynamic systems, we need to transfer the least squares identification also to dynamical systems, and that is what we will do in this and in the next videos. As a small recap, what we can see on the right hand side is just the standard discrete time linear time invariant representation of a dynamical system in the state space, where we have xk plus 1 is equal axk plus buk, and for the moment and for this entire video, we will assume that we will have direct access to the state. So that means that our output y, which we measure, is identical to the state x. Okay, so here we basically assume that we have uh, some discrete time system, or at least that later on we will get measurements on a discrete time grid, such that we can work with this data in order to identify this model. Uh, identifying this model means that we will assume that we are able to get data snippets in terms of x and u, your x on two time scales, the current and the next time step. And our target, our objective is to basically identify the unknown parameters in our system matrices A and B. Okay, so that's the task. So far, uh, what we can do is we can basically uh, um, rewrite or basically uh, yeah, simplify this equation a little bit in that sense that we do not look on the entire state space, so for all n states and all m inputs, but we can just look at one state, uh, which basically means that I would like to look at the east state, so x, e, k, plus one, so that would be basically one out of these n states, so the east, that could be the first, the second, or the last one. And this is identical to a i one to a i n, right? So that would be the east row from this A matrix times x i of k, so the scalar uh, east state at the previous time step k, plus the east row now of this input term, which is b i1 to b i m, considering that we have up to m inputs, times um, u of k. Here I have made a little mistake, so by the way, this here is not the E state, but of course this is the entire state vector on the right hand side, right? Because otherwise the dimension would not work, so these are n parameters, so this is the entire state vector. Okay, however this is now basically describing just a scalar representation of the state and not any vector anymore, right? So the east row out of this equation. We can rewrite this again in our usual least squares form. So left hand side of this recursive equation remains untouched, but the, the left hand side remains untouched, but the right hand side we will basically concatenate x and u, xk and u of k, to be precise, x transpose and u transpose at time step k. So this becomes basically a very long uh, row vector times a very large column vector with a e1 to a e n and concatenating with the b's b i1 to b i m, right? So same equation, just rewritten, concatenating the previous state and the previous input, and the unknown parameters, which are here concatenated in a big 
column vector the A's and the B's, okay? And this should really look familiar somehow because that is basically our standard least squares approach where we have on the left hand side some output which we measure, right? We have assumed that we have direct access to the outputs. Here this X and the U that can be considered our regressor vector Z times W or to be precise Wi because our parameters, unknown parameters are basically n times these um, parameter vectors because here we are just looking at one of the rows, right? So y is equal z times wi, so the classical least squares uh, representation. And what we can now do is basically we can rewrite this or extend this equation for capital till n samples. So capital N samples means that we will sample capital N state transitions, right? So this equation here basically is describing the state transition from xk to xk plus one, giving some inputs. And we can sample this and consider this for N transitions. So that means on the left side of the equation we get xi, let's say for the first time step, until x i n, so n time steps on the left hand side and on the right hand side, we will get basically x 1, 0 to x n, 0, concatenated with the u, so u 1, 0 until u m 0. So that means that is the first state at the initial time step, that's the end state at the initial time step, that's the first input at the initial time step, and that's the mth input at the initial time step. And we consider them up to x1 n minus 1 to x n capital N minus 1 u 1 n minus 1 to u m n minus 1. Okay, that was a little bit too large, however, now it fits, right? So basically, this here on the right hand side are our input data, our regressor data, one time step before the left hand side, right? So that's why here we have time step one, time step zero, time step capital N, time step N minus one. And the parameter vector here, of course, remains the same. The unknown parameter vector remains the same for all of these considered state transitions, which is A I one to A I N b i1 to b i m, right? And that also looks very familiar. That would be the capital Y, the capital Z, and the unknown parameter vector W. I'm sub uh, adding here a subscript i to that because as I said, this is the i-th row out of this system description. So that basically means we get small n separate ls problems. So that means here on the right hand side of the state transition, we can exchange the next state vector, which I have denoted here as yi, with the east state vector, east plus one state vector, and so on. And by doing that, we can basically set up this problem uh, small n times independently from each other, and independently from each other, we can also generate up to small n different parameter vectors. And if we do that and solve this n times independently, 
then we have basically all the parameters which are in the matrices I and B, and we would have a full parameter identification of this linear time uh, discrete system uh, based on data, right? And how we solve that, we have already seen all the techniques for that. We can solve this with ordinary least squares or potentially we can also apply variants like weighted least squares or recursive least squares. That doesn't really matter here. The key point is that by just rewriting our linear time invariant dynamical uh, state space representation, we can design a least squares problem. So that means with a little bit of rewriting, we can directly transfer with any additional uh, mathematical tricks, we can directly transfer the least square solution from the static case to this simple linear case. In the next video, we will basically apply this technique to a practical problem. And then in the over next video, we will also see some limitations and theoretical problems by doing so. However, the key takeaway message of this video is that in a practical sense, we can rewrite a dynamical parameter identification problem for a linear system into the least squares form, which allows us to find closed form solutions. Thank you for watching.